Okay. Okay, good morning or good afternoon, everybody. I'm Matt Christensen, Junior Warden, and we will go ahead and kick off this session, open session, to say where we are at when it comes to the Dean Search with the leadership on the work streams that has been doing some fantastic work, a lot of that behind the scenes, some of that you know, some of that you probably don't know. And fortunately, we're going to have this also live streamed, so that's being done from one side here. And so, I don't know how, oh yes, we have, um, is it going to be Ellen who's going to be helping us on that side? Okay, so Ellen's helping us, thank you very much. And Anne is going to be moderating this session, so thank you, Anne, for doing that. That would be Anne Swartzen. Swartzen. And then we have Anne Duchesne, who's here with the microphone as well. And so, hopefully, between that uh, live stream and those of you who are here and those of you who will come in from outside, we'll be able to go ahead and get through some of the questions from our speakers that are going to give us maybe five, 10 minute updates maximum. It's not to put you on the spot. It's more about just sharing what you would like to that you think people are curious to know where we're at and then we'll go from there. Thanks. Thank you, Matt. <clears throat> and good morning everyone here and online. Um, the people you have in front of you are the conveners of the work teams that were called to help with the search with one exception, Sue Sturman, co-convener of the visioning team, is in Brazil, so we're sorry that uh, she can't join us. Uh, we're gonna start, as Matt said, with uh, each convener giving a short precy of what they've been doing. We'll start with the team that's been doing the most and the hardest work so far, the visioning team, and Angelina Stelmott. Okay, thank you. Um, first of all, I want to say a big thank you to my visioning team uh, members. Um, Arthur Clement, Thomas Gerty, Sonny Hallinan, Seth Hinckley, Jeff Jennings, Bob Seaman, and Sarah Vanderveen. Uh, we started meeting June 14th, and we met every week for an hour until um, August 9th. And every week we had homework assignments so that we could pull together everything that we were assigned to do. So what were we assigned to do? Number one, we had to discern with you uh, where is God calling us to go? Who is God calling us to be? And who will God call to, to get us there? So for that, we pulled together the parish survey, which uh, I'm sure you are familiar with because we had over 150 responses to that. Um, we had the parish-wide discernment um, at the retreat here on July, was it 4th, perhaps? Or 10th, July 10th. Um, we took um, all of that data that we gathered and uh, compiled it into a Dean Search discernment report, um, which we got uh, permission from the vestry, blessing from the vestry to publish online. So go ahead and take a look at that because it's a wonderful, um, can't say snapshot, it's, it's just, it's a wonderful compilation of, um, of our voices. Um, so then the task of the visioning committee was to read all of that, take all of those voices into account, and um, answer the 12 questions which we're uh, required to do to, jo to post the job online in the transitions database. Um, so we thought very deeply, we read every single thing that everybody said um, on the survey, in the retreats. Uh, we answered those questions. We put together a list for the discernment committee, for the vestry to consider and the discernment committee to consider of what we're looking for in the next dean. Um, and we just submitted it all. <laughs> and it's all posted online uh, because one of the things that we, um, that we learned is that transparency is very important um, to our parish, to our congregation. So everything is there. Um, we encourage you to read it. We encourage you to reach out to um, potential candidates. Um, and most of all, thank you so much for engaging in this very important discernment process with us and helping us to vision who our next dean will be. Hello. 
Hello, I'm Sophie Belloway, and I am the convener of the discernment team. Uh, we have a wonderful and very diverse team of nine people, including parishioners and friends of the cathedral, so a wide scope. Uh, we have been meeting uh, since August and weekly uh, since the beginning of September to try to get ourselves organized so that when uh, the vestry has, shall we say, narrowed or become more precise in what we're looking for as coming out of the survey that Angelina spoke about, um, when we are a little more precise about uh, the things that are the most important to us as in our new dean, uh, they will pass that information along to us, the discerners, and we will screen uh, applications along those lines. Uh, we haven't begun to do that yet because we don't have the criteria, but I expect that we will have it to, uh, very soon and our work will begin in, uh, in earnest. We will first uh, try to narrow uh, the list of candidates down to probably uh, 15 to 20, uh, depending on the number and quality of the applications. We will then move into further research uh, via social media and interviews and eventually get down to about eight. Uh, those eight we will submit to the bishop and the transition officer for a red flag check. Uh, and then once that is completed, we will again uh, narrow the list down to a final three or four whose names we will pass along to the vestry uh, for the final call. Good morning. Um, I am here uh, one third of the chair of the prayer team um, uh, together with Chris Barnes and Judith Lanier who is overseas and who, who will be in charge of putting together groups in other time zones um, in the US especially. So this team has only just started, but it's very excited because it's leading me, leading us to places that we maybe did not even think about. It is far more than coming up with a little prayer to be printed in the bulletin, which is to be said every Sunday morning. That is really only a very small part. I think it's also about um, reflecting on how difficult it is to pray, how many people are serious about their faith yet say, I don't know how to pray. So what is it to pray? I think we're hindered to a certain extent by the fact that in our tradition we have such beautiful prayers. So you have the Book of Common Prayer, you have glorious liturgy, so in fact you just read prayers and they're gorgeous. But it may be could lead us to think that that's all that's, that is needed. Yet we also know that private prayer, personal prayer is important. So then I think it, this group will um, start to think about um, the traditions about prayer and the context in which we pray. And nowadays it seems as though uh, mindfulness has taken over a lot of attention and this is not at all against mindfulness but part of, of the work of the prayer team will be to find out what is specific about Christian prayer. It is probably not just about emptying your mind or observing the thoughts that come that cross your mind. It's very much about opening up to a presence so we're at the very beginning and um, it's wonderful to see that we have already 60 people in the team which means we'll have to uh, make smaller teams, smaller groups and find a way of then bringing together what these smaller groups come up in their, in their smaller meetings. Thank you.
Thank you very much. And Anne, do you want to do a convening update on your side as well? Thanks, everyone. Uh, I'm Ann Swartzen. I should have said that before. Um, and I am the convener of the communications team. Uh, and our job is essentially to help the other teams communicate. Uh, to do that, we have uh, Robin Arold in the US, Walter Wells, Alison Lafontaine, Christopher Grinbergs, uh, and Ellen Hampton, uh, who, um, as Matt noticed, is helping us with our uh, online audience today. Um, what we've done so far is we edited um, the documents from the vision, vision, visioning team. Uh, we edited the parish survey and translated it into French. Uh, we edited their documents. They're very profound and uh, important documents. And all along, we've been preparing bulletin announcements. So we want to have something in the bulletin at least once a week. Our ongoing project is the parish profile. Uh, this is essentially uh, the, the visioning team documents talk a lot about who we are, who is God, God is calling us to be, uh, very important and profound questions. The parish profile is more of a, uh, us as a fixed moment in time. I looked at the, the 2003 parish profile. It was a beautiful printed book. The 2012 parish profile was a beautiful PDF, both with photos. This year, we'll have video and photos. It will live on the web, uh, so it'll have a lot of action and a visual sense of who we are in addition to uh, text. Uh, in the future, we'll continue to publicize individual events as they occur, such as the small search prayer when it's written, and we will start to prepare for uh, the moment when the dean is, new dean is called, and we will have the various announcements and communications about that. Okay, so uh, we're now ready to take questions uh, including from the dean, and, the interim dean. And, yeah. and then I wanted to also talk about the welcome team, but I'll... I'll oh, you did, okay. okay. I just want I have to leave, so I just want to yeah. say one thing. And um, first of all, uh, and I absolutely mean this, I've seen this happen in lots of congregations over a long period of time, and you guys uh, get A's. Um, and you're really doing a good job. Um, and as, as you sometimes know, it can be kind of thankless work too, or you know, everybody, you know, everybody has an extra contribution to make and so on and so forth. Uh, wh what I want to say before I go on to my next thing is um, everyone here needs to get on the website, and if you don't know how to find it, Sarah, and send the links to every clergy person you know. Um, I, got, I, I came to the Paris because somebody called me and said, did you know that they're looking for an interim? And it otherwise wasn't on my screen. And, it's, and send it to people who you think wouldn't be right, because they know someone who might be right. And this is a very important way of the communications task and getting the word out. And I see it all the time. Oh, it wasn't even on my screen, but I got an email from so on and so forth. Even send it to people who aren't Episcopal clergy. They might know an Episcopal clergy person in their town who speaks French or is a member of the of the European Union somehow. Or not, not that those things are required, but that you know this, these things that help. You never know what will click with someone. So I, I've got to run. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> and I just wanted to say that we we have one more team that is not up here yet because it's not quite the time. And that team is the welcome team. So, and we will actually have two forms of a team. One to welcome the new dean in, uh, making sure that everything is ready, and then another team that will help the, the dean get established. So we're going to uh, divide that up. We've already got a long list of people who have been recommended, but as we get closer to the you know, start of 2023, we will go out and circulate again and see who, whose schedule permits it, who has the, the passion in their heart to, to really get things set up, and then to welcome the dean they're on, so any questions? I'll start here and then I'll go back to Kate. Hi, this is a very basic question. Could you just remind us of the, the calendar of the process? Want to take it, Matt, or? So what I would say, let's start from the end. The desired outcome is that by the end of March, we have appointed and named a new dean. Now, one of the things that I think we all are cognizant of is it's a ambitious timeline. 
and already from the summer there was so much work that was done, so I'm, I'm still, you know, I, I would like to also agree with what the team just said. It's an amazing group we have to try and do this, but we've definitely seen some emails about the need for refinement, the need to help you, Sophie, and the group. So we understand that to meet that timeline, we're working as hard as we can to try and figure out the best process to get us to the interviews and, and the shortlisting that Sophie spoke to. So I think even when it comes to teams and the work they've done, I would say, this is just a guess, but I think Angelina, the visioning team has done a big part of the work, but I don't think you're done either in a way, because part of the work could be to continue looking and thinking about the role of the church, the role of the cathedral, and so there is still ongoing work as part of this to try and get to the best place when we start to do the interviews and can answer the questions about who we are, who we are and going back to what we're looking for. So in terms of a calendar, that would be the kind of most important um, date. I would have thought that we're trying to do interviews by the new year. I'm not sure if it's going to happen before the new year in terms of the short list. I think short list is more about January, February, but maybe you know Sophie. Sorry, but I think that's a little ambitious. Uh, it will, of course, depend on the number and quality of applications, which we can't know at this point. Uh, it goes without saying that if we get 20 applicants, that's a far different cry than if we get 50 or 80. Uh, and so narrowing that number down to a final three to four is going to take a lot of work. And as soon as really uh, resumes start to come in and we have the criteria. Uh, our team, which is already meeting once a week, will probably meet uh, two, even three times a week. And I hope you will keep your, them and me <laughs> in your prayers because it's a tremendous responsibility and a tremendous amount of work. And uh, we are indebted to these people for making that contribution. Maybe one other thing I will add on, on the numbers. We did get some, what I would think of as humbling information from our transition consultant, Linda, who just did a first foray into what is a traditional area to look for a catchment area, really. It's a fair to look for potential uh, deans. And if I have the numbers correctly from the email I saw, there were roughly, let me just get them, because I wrote down before I came here today, 103 churches looking for a new leadership. Out of that 103 churches, there were 27 people looking for jobs. So that's why I think the dean has rightfully said that it's going to come from all of our ability to try and get the network out there about the role, the exciting opportunity to be here beyond the traditional recruitment types of approaches one would think of taking because when Linda had warned us there's a shortage of priests, this was the moment where we really saw it's true. I have a question about the survey. So one of the questions was what, what qualities do you look for in a dean? And if two respondents said oppo had opposing beliefs about what they look for in a dean, would you choose a, like a candidate that had that stro stroke, strike a balance between both of them? Or do you, will you choose a candidate that will you have to like decide whether some people what some people are looking for in a dean is what you're looking for in a dean, even if other people have, have opposing beliefs. So if I heard the question, it was about how do we deal with variations on the, the, what has been created so far of what we're looking for, more or less. I think that's how I understood the question. So to try and help Sophie and her team, that was a little bit of, in a way, the same question Sophie has had. Sorry, I have this thing in my way, which was a bit about how do you figure out what trade-offs one is willing to make? And I'll just give you a different example. So if we said that we're looking for a dean who speaks some French, wouldn't that be nice? And we're looking for a dean who does some good sermons, wouldn't that be nice? Which one's more important? And so what we're doing right now as a vestry is Anne Duchesne has crafted with her expertise a very difficult survey, very well done. You cannot game it at all. We tried to refine a little bit more and make those trade-offs clearer about how to help, and I think of it as the tails, whether it be a, what comes out of we all agree we really need this quality, or we also can conversely see, yeah, you know, between French and a sermon, maybe the French is the one that is less important than some of the other qualities, and that's to help move past the we want a dean who does everything, 
which is one of the challenges in a search like this. So I think that that piece of work, there's a meeting on Tuesday that the vestry is doing to talk exactly about that with the goal of turning that around very, very fast so that Sophie has a much better one for her committee. Work stream, sorry. Just one more thing about questions. Uh, as you all can see and know, if you, have, if you are here and have a question, uh, Andy Shane will bring you a microphone. If you're online, uh, you can ask your question either on the YouTube channel or the Facebook channel, and Ellen will make sure it gets to us. Hi. Um, I just, I have like two points. Uh, I don't know, there's one other person on our, our um, Communications Committee, Walter Wells, I don't know if uh, his name was mentioned or not. Oh, okay, excuse me. Uh, the other thing I, I want to try to voice is um, concerning the prayer. Um, in my personal life, uh, one of the very first things I do in the morning is to pray, to read something, to guide me and, and put my intention through that day to the best of my ability. So I, I'm thinking with this process, for me, um, to be guided by God first uh, in prayer for the guidance to the new dean is really something that is crucial. Um, and, and I feel that it, it was more than just something that was a little, a little diddly of a prayer that was put in the bulletin. It, was, it, is, an, it is an intention for those right steps to be guided to that right person. And um, I'd hope that we could see that uh, come back to it because what, everything we're doing here, you know, it's in the grace of God, for God, and God should be first <laughs> in it. And, and, and I, I, we are a corporation, we do have a huge budget that we have to manage, but we have that because it comes from above, so thanks. Is gonna... Thank you very much. That is very much the spirit of, uh, of, of the prayer team. It's to say that we have to do everything that a business does, but there is an additional or maybe primary fundamental dimension of prayer. So thank you very much. That what you just said was precisely what, uh, what we see as our, our ministry everyone's ministry. Other, other questions? Any? Oh, yep. Thank you all for what you're doing. Um, this may be a, a little bit of a premature question, but what will be the role of references um, in your search for the dean? Uh, is an HR kind of question, and in my career, I've had to deal with lots of sorting through references and ensuring that all candidates were heard and those who had uh, intimate knowledge of their professional life, and maybe their, their greater lives, uh, were, uh, were, were considered. Um, it's, it's great to hear from the individual himself, herself, what have you, but uh, the, uh, the outside person looking in can also be very helpful. Thank you. Um, yes, uh, we're asking uh, all candidates to provide uh, references. We will systematically check all the references that have been um, indicated to us, but we will also ask uh, if the senior warden or junior warden or vestry people of that person's parish are not among those listed. We will ask for those references and contact those people. Um, also, when we get down to the number of about eight, we will submit that, to, uh, that list to the transition officer and the bishop who will carry out what they call red flag checks they will check with their counterparts in the candidates' diocese to make sure that there are not issues out there uh, that we should be aware of. Other questions? 
Let me mention that um, if you're watching this online delayed, because it is early in the US, I think you can still put questions into the Facebook and YouTube channels. We'll try and watch them in coming days and the communications team will flag them to the relevant person. Uh, and just one other um, thing I'd like to say, uh, someone else has been helping all our teams very diligently, communications manager Sarah Sturman. Everything on the web goes through her. Uh, she has done and will continue to do yeoman service in this work. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. So in the spirit of full disclosure, I need to say that I'm um, married to one of the co-conveners of the visioning team. Um, nonetheless, I would first like to say that I think the visioning team has done absolutely staggering work in a um, very short amount of time. Um, which I was uniquely positioned to, to view. Um, so, you know, one thing that I think I saw come out of the surveys and, and the visioning report was a desire for more opportunities for connection, more opportunities for service at the cathedral, right? I think that came through loud and clear. Um, the dean is one person, right? So the dean is going to come in several months from now. They're not going to be superhuman, right? Um, does anyone, do, do any of you have any reflections or thoughts? What can we all do to, to kind of collectively meet that, that kind of hunger? Because one person is not going to be able to magically transform a community of, of hundreds, right? I'd say just by saying it is a great start. And then there's probably different means about how one would do it. So the whole idea of volunteerism is a big question that we have about how do we consider and think through what is volunteerism in the future beyond the ones that we've often seen, which are the traditional volunteers. And how do we find the right, going back to Anne's point, welcoming to bring that journey forward to get people from that zone where they might be a little bit of what do I do, how can I do it, to, so, to showing what are the different avenues that we offer here. And so I think if you have ideas about what we could do to modernize the way that we have been doing that, it's something we have an ongoing discussion about at the vestry. It's a big one for Tim, as well as Dean, who has been saying, hey, we need to really think through what is the way to bring a bit more of a bench strength and bring that calling out that people might have and not know how to express it. So it's great that you have voiced it. It's something that's really important for us. We agree you can't do it all in one person or two, let's say, Dean and, and Nat, for example, because uh, the burnout factor is really there. We agree. There's a question coming. Yes, thank you for the, uh, for the question. Uh, from the communication team standpoint, um, the parish profile uh, will continue to live on the website even after the next dean is called. We'll probably modify it and change some of the wording. But there, it uh, will have a list of, as we did in the ministry fair last week, all the ministries we offer, all the committees we have, contact points for those. That's not new, and maybe it's not enough, but at least it'll be there for people to look up. So we have a question from online. Um, I believe, is the first, uh, that's the name of the person at the beginning? Uh, from, I can't read it really well, look at Taka Tax. Anyway, sorry, uh, question asker, I didn't get it quite right. Uh, the question is, should the future dean be committed to open communion? So we, uh, we know that open table was not accepted within the, the last general convention, but it certainly has come out and we did some artful rewarding of that because we couldn't post our job uh, description saying that we wanted a dean who, who practiced open table. So we, we did some, some creative wordsmithing to open it up and say that we want a dean who is accepting of everyone and welcoming to God's table. So that is, uh, that is what we are certainly looking for. So to answer Taka, yes. <laughs> Other questions? Thank 
Thank you. So I'm, I'm not a direct member of this community. I come from the French-speaking uh, church in New York City. And I was just uh, wanting to, well, to ask you a question. Are you, um, so you're looking for a new dean and you've been in our prayers very much as going through this process. And I was wondering like how, how much of a priority is it for you, um, considering the privileged place of the Episcopal Church here in Paris, uh, to find some, someone who would be uh, fluent uh, in French, in French uh, because often when we have people who ask us, you know, where can we worship in Paris? We, we, ask, we told them, of course, here, uh, but some of them would like also to worship in French. And uh, so that's one of my questions on behalf of the French church, uh, French-speaking church in New York City. Thank you. First of all, thank you for being with us. And uh, you can also let uh, them know that we have as well a, a French mission church on the Saturday evenings. But uh, we'll turn it over, I guess, maybe to Sophie to answer. Um, a little bit about the place of, of French and where we can, I can tell you that we as a vestry are working on that uh, given the survey that I just sent out to the vestry to, to look at the weighting and to see what, what is important in you know, the overall criteria, but certainly having French language, the parish profile showed that that was important. I think we all are agreed that uh, this is not a parish uniquely for American expats. Everyone, everyone has a place, an equal place here. And we are after a dean who will nurture that community uh, and it be open to all. As we say, we try to have um, a smattering of French in the 11 o'clock service, but there is also uh, a Saturday evening uh, service which is uh, entirely in French. Uh, would f speaking French be uh, the absolute priority on the, uh, in the, among the criteria that will be forwarded us to, to us from the vestry? I don't know. Uh, that's not my job. I would say, though, that I think as the, the vestry and the discernment team really get down to their work, the, the top priorities will be what the dean must have when he or she arrives. There are some things that uh, m the, the, the dean must have, cannot acquire or grow into once he or she arrives here. There are other things which it would be nice for the dean to have but which he can or she can acquire once here. And that will be a part of the discernment process also. It does not mean that having someone who is open to and or is a French speaker, that that's not important. But that is something that that person living in a newly French environment could grow into uh, having uh, deep uh, managerial experience is probably something that he could not grow into in a place as complex as this. Yeah. Yeah, Jocelyn here with a question. This is, just a, this is a comment more than a question and inspired by our, our friend from New York. Um, of course, our focus right now is on who this dean will be and how the person is going to emerge, appear, and choose to come. Um, but I think there's also something about how the, how the whole community um, will support this person and how we welcome French speakers, English speakers, bilingual people, people from other cultures, so there's also, for me, that's also a question about all of us. It's not just is the dean, will the new dean be able to speak French, but how will all of us be able to welcome people who really want to find both that Anglican culture and also um, French language, for example? Harriet, did you have a question? No? Okay. Other questions or comments? Um, and if I could
I just um, speak to Taka's comment yep, a bit further? Um, I just wanted to note that in our uh, 12 questions, we originally had mentioned open table several times, and the reason why is because it is, it is our D it's in our DNA. It's absolutely in our DNA. So although the language was flagged because it's currently a sensitive topic, um, and we finessed the language to indicate um, that we are an open table parish without saying so in so many words, in the two words. Um, we, what we did was we used language from our vision statement. Uh, we used language that was um, everything, as, as Anne said, you know, noting our welcome, noting that um, we are all united in Christ. Um, so that hopefully remains clear um, in the job posting, and it will certainly be clear on the website. Um, and I will pass this on to Anne now, <laughs> who will make, who will um, attest to that. Yes, thank you, Angelina. Um, the documents um, that Angelina, that the visioning team prepared were for, at least some of them, uh, were official Episcopal Church documents that go into the application. Um, whereas the parish profile is our document, and it will say open table. It's not really an issue in the search because I'm told, and we're all told, candidates know that coded language, so they're not going to be discouraged if that precise term is not in the Episcopal Church documents. But it also, when we're you know, expressing who we are on our website, we will use that term. Other questions? Okay. Oh, sorry. Did you have your hand up? No. Okay. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for coming. Thank you for your interest. We'll hold these sessions on a regular basis. So we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you all.